the LAC USC Medical Center Master Plan. This is the LA County portion of the Master Plan. Uh, the USC portion of the Master Plan has been restarted now that we've got direction from the supervisors to include a new 150 bed, ho a ho 150 bed hospital within the Master Plan. We'd like to invite you to send a delegation to an upcoming community workshop. We can pass these out. There's some for the general audience as well. The first meeting will be on the 26th of October. There'll be a follow-up meeting on October the 30th. Both meetings share the same exact agenda. We're just doing it this way because we feel it makes it more convenient for you. You'll have an opportunity to learn about the master plan, to see how your input at previous community workshops really has made a difference on the master plan and where we're going with this project in the future now that we have this hospital project on board. If there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. But you guys have been terrific in driving the project and coming out to our community workshops. We hope that you'll be able to one of these two, two community workshops as well. If there's any questions, I'd answer them. Yeah, is this, uh, it's you, you, so you guys tweaked it based on what they heard from the public? And the, uh, uh, the, LA, the LA County side of it. Yeah, yeah I was there. <laughs> I was the one at the hospital. Right, I was, right. I was yes. that meeting. So, you kind of tweaked so we, we took all the input that we got during those workshops. Uh, we were able to add to that this new direction that the Board of Supervisors gave us to include this new 150-bed hospital, and you'll see the results at this workshop on the 26th. So is that kind of like, because people were concerned because Martin Luther King closed their trauma unit, and they didn't expect that and, and when they did the original plans? And so now they have a lot of influx of other emergencies. Well, I believe it's one third of all trauma cases in Los Angeles County are served at the LAC USC Medical Center. Yeah, and then it is a huge facility, and it's only getting larger with the new Affordable Health Care Act. Uh, it's having to accommodate that. Many. That's one of the reasons for the, that's one of the reasons for the additional hospital bed. Also, there's the opportunity to create wellness centers, training centers, uh, uh, community gardens, and other community activities. Uh, celebrate wellness and create more of a dynamic setup. Good, yeah. Um, can you email this to me so I can go ahead and put it Sure, you want to write down your email address, so I'll do it as soon as we get back to my office then. It, it'll be on the website. Anyway. It'll be on the website as well, but I mean, we just got an email blast, so if you want to forward it to others, that'd be great. Any other questions or comments? Great, thank you very much. Yes. The same content will be for the exact same. That's correct. Same content for both meetings. Okay. We recognize some people can make it on a weekday evening, okay. some people can't. That's why we have it on a Saturday morning. Okay, that's all I want. Terrific. Well, thank you very much. We'll see you at the meetings. Is there anyone else that needs a public uh, speaker card? Public comment card? Next, Anselmo Flores. Hello. Uh, I just actually had a question from the last meeting. If, um, Whatever needs to be redone on the agenda to free up the funds so you guys can start doing something with the, the funds that have been frozen. Is it public comments or not? That's not the agenda, it's not on this, right? Yeah, but we don't we can't have discuss it. We can't it's discuss. Not the agenda. Yeah. Oh, it's point of order. Yeah, so we're, and we haven't started the agenda. Right. Yeah, point is if you're not formally starting the agenda, then. But, uh, we got more, we would be doing a serial meeting too. So more than enough of us right. in here. So I would say either we do a public comment or just not Thank you. black or white on the situation. Right? Oh, we can expand. You can email me and I can respond to you via email. Mm -hmm. you okay. Or you can email me. Basically, is what you're saying is you, you're allowed to speak for two minutes, but we can't give you a response. Right. Oh, because it's not really yeah. So you need to yeah, finish yeah, talking. Yeah, you still need to No, I just that kind of answered it. Sorry, brown neck and part. Anybody else need a speaker card? Agenda, anybody needs? Everybody got everything? Have we started? No, no, we have not. Mr. McGuire, uh, Mr. McGuire, just kind of let's collect it. Yeah, I can go to 610, 610, whatever we spent the week for McGuire.
like to volunteer for the health fair on October 19th. We partnered with Assemblymember Jimmy Gomez. Uh, we're going to be um, needing some volunteers to man the booth. So if anybody would like to um, participate, please email Mr. Chair, Mr. Mandela, to Courtney. Are you available on the 19th? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. From what time to what time? 10 in the morning to 2? 10 to 2. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. There will be a booth there. And well, I had already offered the last meeting, but I wasn't sure what the actual yeah. schedule was. Oh, okay. um, Mr. Chair, anybody else? Is there? I believe I should be with me. I don't have any schedule yet. But I, I will be there for a few hours. And one volunteer, I don't want to volunteer. So. Mr. Pantage. Mr. Johnson, are you a volunteer? Yes, uh, we from Saturday. We from I would say about 50, I would say 50, 50 because there's so many other businesses we from San Diego, which I mean, you're far away. So. Okay. Mr. Chavez. Mr. Chavez.
It looks like diagram. It looks pretty cool. It goes up. Oh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs>
um, to have these board members removed so that we can clarify which vacancies are available so that any stakeholder in our community can have the opportunity to become part of our board. I'll make a motion that we remove uh, the, recommend, the recommendations of board members as spelled out here. Anybody second the motion? Second.
So when it comes to the, the, the actual bylaws, if we could just worry about it. Couple of issues here, Madam Chair. Um, in the previous board incarnation, the it was, and I think that there were Chavez, Cynthia Anthony, a former board member. It used to be that the phone calls or emails were made to the recording secretary. Okay. Um, I would, you know, for the sake of time, I would think that for the sake of record keeping, redundancy is always a, always a good thing to have. For record keeping to us, I would say that the president and recording secretary should be aware, or CC all the CC the whole executive board, or at least two board members. Okay, so at least there's a cross check that at least you talk to one, and for whatever reason you had electronic failure or something like that, and the other board member got it, then at least you have that that redundancy in place. Um, there is, I would also understand here the professional courtesy. This is a volunteer board, and we we should all try to be flexible in accommodating issues that may come up in people's workplace, um, home situations, and so forth. But uh, there should be a cut and dry procedure on calling. Just like, for example, I mean, use Ms. Orpesa, for example. Ms. Orpesa has this job in the county, in the county supervisor's office that required him to work late evenings and times. And that way, when he needs to get a hold of somebody, we should have a set protocol in place that basically says either get a hold of the recording secretary or, or the president or email both simultaneously in that process. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Anybody else? Yes, yes. yes Mr. Johnson. Okay, in terms of uh, addressing both of you, Madam President and the recorder over there, yeah, people have a lot of lives going on besides whatever they're investing here, whether they're in members of committees uh, at whatever level. Uh, things happen in anybody's life unexpected, and sometimes you're not able to call anybody for whatever the reason, you know. Uh, and so if they can get a hold of you later on and say blah, blah, this and that, and it sounds whatever, somewhat reasonable, I think it uh, maybe fall in the standing rules committee over there at the end. Mr. Pacheco. Hello. Keep going. Can I hear you? Oh, great. Um, so uh, I think there has to be extenuating circumstances like illness, you know, even just a plain uh, cold that you have in your head might keep you from not going someplace, meaning here. Uh, and things like that should be excused vacations, uh, one day off at work for whatever reason, you think things like that. The other thing I wanted to ask here, in terms of since we now are going to have, did you have to vote for the, the, the people you're recommending to be? Yes, we have to take a vote. Okay, so we'll before you take the vote, um, I would like to know if you can inform the stakeholders and the rest of us that might have not be called the, uh, the uh, I forget the word. Anyway, the standard, the high bar that needed to be fill those vacancies once they become officially vacant, we'll have four, and what is the requirement? Because we have people that ran for office, did not get elected, the priorities at what level school Okay, well that's on a separate agenda item, Mr. Chavez. Yeah, so let me go ahead and take a vote now. We have the first and the, the, the second by uh, nobody. We'll no, the motion came from you, and the yeah. county seconded. Yes. Right. No, she made the motion. I, read, I just made the recommendation. She oh, okay. made the motion. Okay. Okay, so I'd like to take a vote. You seconded. I think you seconded. Mr. Pacheco, second the motion. I'm sorry. Thank you. If we could take a vote, Mr. Johnson. Okay. All in favor, I'm going to read this for the record again. Yes, please. Okay. All in favor of the recommendation to remove board member Francisco Valenzuela, Felix Andrade, Brenda Morales, and Miguel Hernandez due to three unexcused absences for LA 32 bylaws, Article 5, Governing Board, Section 7 absences. <coughs> Any director misses two meetings, consider regular scheduled general meetings, or optionally three total board member meetings during any 12 month period will be automatically removed from the board. Additionally, these board members are not done, met done, and Article 14 compliance, Section 2 training requirements. All those in favor of removing those four members based upon that information just stated, please signify by raising your hands. Can I ask for a... Uh, we don't count or we count too? Yes, we're all. Oh, wow. 
I'll ask right this before. Yeah. Good I morning. thought it was exactly point of information here. Uh, we don't need to. We don't need to do according to bylaws. Let me read it for you. Unless this bylaw is changed, any director who misses two consecutive regularly scheduled general meetings or optionally three total meetings during any 12-month period will be automatically removed. Yes. We don't. We don't need to do, do this. But the problem is, um, I, I read that to be done, and they said, for the record, they wanted us to state it officially, and they would prefer a vote. So Dan is asking us to go against our own Bible. Yes, for this particular, and I, Mr. Anthony. Let that be already in the record. record. <laughs> Okay, so for the record, so for yeah, the record, this recommendation for the general board vote being made to get done. Yes. Okay. And they conflict with our bylaws. That's right. There's a confliction there. And I have to stay based on the fact that I don't do anything against the bylaws. Whether Dunn tells me to do it or not. Okay. So I'll take a five. All in favor, please raise your hand.
I move the motion. Okay, and second? Okay. And, and we have we had discussion complete? Yeah, we did. Did you want to say something? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out from our bylaws, once again, what the procedure is. Okay, because it says at the general board meeting on a new book, but I, I, I don't see where it talks about what we're doing. It's part of the clarification. You're trying to read the fine print. Well, yeah, exactly. Sure, huh? exactly. Well, would somebody, uh, lead, uh, Madam Chair, since you're not. Again, this yeah, is a right. recommendation of how to do it based no, on the election time that was in the bylaws. Yeah, well, could you tell through what section it is, please? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, I would if you got here six. Number six. <laughs> Well, I get here at Article 5, Section 6. Article 5, Section 6. Filling the vacancy. Okay, how does this, what does it say if you would? Let's get it done before he does get here. <laughs> you can have someone read it. 6, what was that? Well, first of all, Section 6 is filling vacancy. If a director resigns, is expelled, or is recalled, that's the first part. Or if they were not enough candidates to fill a specific category during the election, or to nominate individuals to fill those vacant positions, all candidates must verify stakeholder status by completing a candidate application form. Okay. So the same. Um, so she would be the same region. She had same, same region. So she, she's ran for the same region, and it says Correct. filling vacancy, same region. The board may first nominate from the pool of candidates in the same region. She qualifies under that. That did not win in that election pending.